Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, so we have everyone here. So did you have any question about what we covered last time? Because um, our department have a guest from Japan. So I was asked to present and give them a lecture at 3.30. So today the lecture will be about one hour and, and uh, 50 minutes. And then I'm going to give you the quiz, first quiz today. So that will be open book, open notes. So I try to help you out as, as much as possible. So I just want to make sure you read the, uh, the reading materials. So every question came out of my lecture note and PDF file. So as long as you're familiar with the material and, and you have read the reading assignment uh, on a weekly basis, then I don't believe you have uh, some issue. So uh, that's what we're going to because we have uh, five more quizzes throughout the semester and two exams, uh, three exams, two midterm exams and one final exams. Okay, so uh, as a reminder, what are the four elements of negligence? What are the four elements of negligence? This will be on quizzes. So uh, one of the basic um, the element in negligence bless you. Huh? Okay, so I said duty, but uh, there's a, some deleted words. Duty or some people call it duty of care or duty of standard of care. Okay. So duty occurs when you have some relationship between two parties, such as between you and I. Think about the relationship. I'm the instructor of this course, and you are the student. You are my guest. If I want to use legal term, legal terminology, you are a business invitee. You pay for tuition and fees. I receive the salary from the university, right? So the relationship has been established. So I have a duty or I have a duty of care for you or I have a duty of standard of care. You have a certain expectation as a student certain level of expectation from academic standpoint from out of this class. So that is a my duty. And the second is a breach of duty or breach of duty of care or breach of duty of standard of care, which means if I cancel a class with no reason and there's no makeup classes, that will be my breach of duty. And what about damages? If you pay for uh, tuition and fees and you didn't learn anything out of this class, that will be your damages. And then causation, that's kind of a tricky and difficult to understand. But think about my cancellation of courses without no reason, which is a breach of my duty, and your lack of knowledge in sports law because of my breach of duty. Then if you believe there is some causation, then you will meet four elements of negligence. So you have a, you have a case to, to file against me. Okay? And what about the defensible options? So main purpose of this course is to not to train you, not to educate you to make a case and to make a, some uh, compensation uh, from any negligent issues, but also I want you to think about how to protect yourself and your organization on behalf as a prospective sports managers. Okay. So what are the defensible options? Okay, so I want you to start from elements of negligence. If you miss 
any one of the elements of negligence, then there's no case can be made, which means I have no damages. I sprain my ankle when I play three on three basketball. There is a water powder on the floor. There must be some issue, right? Janitor has a duty and breach of duty and there's water, right, damages. And then cogitation. However, even though I, I stepped down, I fell down, and there's, I have no damages. No damages, no cases. So if you, if you can find any one of the four elements is missing, then you will be okay. So try to attack that first. If you believe four elements of negligence exist, then you can think about some other defensible option, which is a statute of limitation. That's the first one, right? Statute of limitation. In most states, in the United States, how many years? Two years. So there is a two-year window. So if you miss two-year window uh, from the date that uh, accident occurs, then you will lose the opportunity. So um, I just want to br bring up this case again uh, next couple of weeks. There's a Shannon Cooper, one of the uh, former firefighters, death at the uh, uh, Texas Ranger Stadium's uh, home stadium, right? And then the team, the manager, general manager, or club president, Nolan Lyon, invited his son and wife. And his son actually was, uh, up, had an opportunity to pitch for a post position uh, uh, games in September 30s in 2011. Why? So they kind of worry about the family, the victim's family, file a claim. So next, so next year, what happened? The Texas Rangers created the statue featuring the victim, Shannon Cooper, and his son. So all statue actually uh, has been located in the front of the stadiums. What a great dedication to his family. Okay. After two years, nothing going on because Window is closed. No more opportunity to file a claim. And I read an, op write a, I read an article this morning about Asian Airlines, uh, former crews filed a claim against Asian Airlines and manufacturer, which is a Boeing Corporation. And one of the uh, cruiser uh, uh, company, why? A couple years ago, I think last year or a year before, probably less than two years, there's a, one of the Asian airline airplane has a, some emergency landing at um, San Francisco International Airport. So there were 16 crews, and some of them actually filed a claim. These days, recently, uh, this is about the toll law. Yeah, so they try to keep the date. All the toll law should be filed within two years. So statute of limitation. And second, what is just second? Act of God. Act of God. What are the two key words should come together? Unforeseeable and natural disaster. Uh, what does that unforeseeable uh, mean? Unpredictable. So you have no idea what's going to happen. One of the examples of un, um, unforeseeable natural disaster will be lightning. Uh, not necessarily, but most of times, the lightning can be, uh, can be tracked. The weatherman, especially we going to Korea, going to have the President Cup, the golf, one of the uh, prestigious golf tournaments in Korea in a couple of weeks. So think about thousands of galleries will be standing, will be there, will be out there. What if there's a thunderstorm with lightning, with moving around, coming to your location, golf course, what would you do? How can you evacuate thousands of people at the same time? Let's say weatherman reported you, you are as one of the assistant manager at the golf course, saying 
There's a thunderstorm coming to, to our golf course, just about five miles away from the location. What would you do? We have 9,000 galleries out there. They have no idea what's going on. So this is about legal issues, right? How can you evacuate 9,000, 10,000 galleries at the same time? From the lightning. You have a, a contingency plan or risk management plan. Risk management plan should be made in, in advance. So if it had happened, then uh, as a rule of thumb, you have to know what drawer you have to look for. And open the drawer. And step one, report to your boss, supervisor. Radio communication, OK, there's a third thunderstorm coming. What do I do? Step two, right? announce in a nice way. Do not say thunderstorm with lightning coming to your golf course. A lot of people are going to uh, crazily getting out of the golf tournament. So usually, they will provide the buses, many buses at the golf course, just in case the golf tournament will be suspended until later notice and then try to put the people in the bus. There will be shelter, temporary shelter. Obviously, they can suspend, they can cancel the tournament right away until the thunderstorm moves away. So like I said before, you know, flash the bang, right? So you need to, you need to trace where the thunderstorm with lightning uh, um, uh, is at, and you can do uh, the best as best as possible okay so f do you remember the case baseball game baseball coach so the baseball coach in the one of the river uh, academy and then the coach asked every player every player should be at bat kind of wrapping up all the practice before the major games in two days so I just want every player, every hitter, try to be at, at bat at least one time. All of a sudden, kind of dark cloud, dark cloud is uh, uh, covering your area. And then he continued, okay, do it, okay? This last minute, okay? We got to finish this practice, this drill, because we have a big game coming up in a couple of days. And then one of the, uh, one of the baseball player was hit by lightning, he died. So the victim's family filed a claim. If you are in the position, in the stand of the coaches, you are the coaches, what would you do? Obviously you are, will, you will be the, one of the plaintiff, a defendant, and also chain of command, athletic director. Because the athletic director has a duty of care, supervise all the coaches, what are they doing? Do they follow the direction, regulation? If they do not supervise their subordinate, like a coach, baseball coaches, then another negligent. So you can follow all the, all the dependent, uh, dependent based on the chain of command. And obviously, the university or high school can be one of the finer um, defendants for their case. So what kind of option can you say? Do you believe, oh, this is an act of God, natural disaster? I had no idea. Can you use that act of God as one of the effective defensible option for this case? So two keywords, unforeseeable, uh, natural disaster. Lightning, absolutely natural disaster. But how you define Unforeseeable. Can you foresee or can you predict the lightning in a certain way? Absolutely. Yeah, this is different from um, tsunami. Like there's no time to evacuate. But they try to warn as, as soon as possible. So maybe one hour before or 30 minutes. So try to give enough time or uh, as more time as possible to um, for them uh, to evacuate from that devastated locations. Okay, what else? What other defensible options? So, statute of limitation and act of God. 
Contributory or competitive negligence. What does that mean? Competitive. So you, so you don't have to distinct uh, or differentiate between contributory or and and or uh, competitive. Just just understand as a one of the uh, as a together. More and more state adopt competitive negligence. From the civil law, two cars collision at the traffic at the junction. What would you do? Okay, you are 60% negligent and the other party 40% negligent. If one party um, purposely ignored the red light, stop light, went through, and the other car just followed the direction, green light, and then there's a big collision. So probably more than 90% of uh, the vehicle, the party who ignored the red light, stop light, will be negligent. So you try to produce how much total damages. And then if you're 90% negligent, then 90% of whatever total damages will be paid out of your pocket. Uh, most of cases, probably insurance company going to pay for it. And same thing, likewise, the organization, sports organization have a premium insurance, especially mo uh, most of North American sports organization. It's not about criminal law. This is not about sending you to the prison. This is about compensation. I have insurance, premium insurance. Somebody hurt. That's the nature of uh, organization, sport organizations. I want to be paid, especially your medical bills, some of the foregone income or lost income buy out of our insurance company. However, the reason that we charge certain amount of insurance um, uh, premium policy out of your monthly fee or annual membership fee. So you are somewhat contributing the insurance premium fee out of your, uh, in your ticket prices or uh, membership prices. What are the other, one of the common and most important concept, defensible option? Assumption risk, assumption risk. You have to always think about assumption risk. Breaking your finger while playing volleyball, that's the assumption risk. Natural, expected, which is a standard of care. Sprain your ankle while playing basketball, that's the nature of the game. But sometimes, like a Mike Tyson and uh, Holyfield, what happened from that prestigious match? Boxing. Holyfield, his ear was eaten by Mike Tyson. So think about, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Holyfield, probably he's, he's boxing for a number of years, but he never imagined. That is not risk inherent uh, in the game of boxing. Nobody expected. So that is not standard care of the duty, right? So that's not assumption risk. Nobody, no boxers can assume my years eaten by other players. Yeah, assumption risk. What other uh, example of assumption risk you can think of? Pardon? Okay, Luis Hart. Oh, one of the Colombian? Okay. Suspended from, okay, attending uh, for five months or so. Okay, so unreasonable uh, risk of harm, okay. I said unreasonable risk of harm, that specific phrase can be found from your PowerPoint slide, okay. If you um, look at the slide, like a second or third slide last time we covered. Okay, what are the other, other defensible options? 
immunity, immunity. So you can you can think about several different um, uh, uh, organi organizations. Once again, this notion came from UK, United Kingdom. The king can do no wrong. Okay. So if I say in Korean, Tanek um, Sochukwon, like a senators and representative, Kuk one cannot be uh, uh, charges in terms of negligence. They can be charges from other uh, criminal behaviors or more than tall law, but all about tall law or negligence like Jingmu Yugi and more, then they will be uh, uh, immune. So governmental immunities or charitable immunities, charitable immunity like a hospital, non-profit organization trying to run uh, try to organize 5K run for breast cancers, Greece, right? Breast cancers. So they try to fundraise okay, and donate the amount of money collected from 5K run. All the runners wear pink shirts. Okay? And then whenever you join that 5K run, you have to pay for the uh, entry fee. 10 bucks, $10 or $20. You donate it. And then you had an opportunity to run with groups of people with wearing a uh, pink shirt. Pink shirt will be freebies. You can have a uh, pink shirt. So all the money collected will be donated from, uh, to the hospital, local hospital, or other sponsors or organizing body. But just in case participant were injured by negligence of the organizing body or hospital or charitable organization, then you will be exempt. Okay? But more and more charitable organizations, more and more charitable organizations try to get away from any legal issues in terms of tall law, um, tall law. So the court, as a new trend, which means we are not going to and we are not automatically waiving charitable organization from negligent issue because I want you to do, I want you to keep your duty of care. No more automatic protection. So if you have a duty to care, duty to protect your participant, and then you have to do it. Such as 5K run, what you have to do? You have to provide medical supplies at the end of the runners, so you have to provide ambulances with. So anybody needs some medical assistance, then they can provide immediate medical assistance to the participant. Secondly, they are to provide enough, probably more than enough waters. Somebody thirsty, then okay, you have to do it. You have to provide water as many as possible. So try to, um, um, make people de um, from being dehydrated. So provide enough water. Okay, is that it? Okay. So I want you to remember uh, the five defensible options. Okay, and then violence and tall law. Have you read two cases? One is a Nabojini case. So if you look at the week number three in my PDF file, my lecture note, then you will see two major cases. The first one is Nabozini versus Barnhill, the high school soccer players. This is one of the similar, similar uh, cases in participant negligent issues. And second case is a Mackie-chan case, Mackie-chan versus St. Louis Hockey Club. Not in the PowerPoint slide. It should be on your reading packet. Okay. So this is a reading packet. Um, wing number three, right? So violence and tall law. So this is Nabojini case. Nabojini versus Barnier. So you have to answer eight questions after reading the case. This is a 
actual summary of the cases. So this is page number 32. Okay. Also, another case you have to read. Mackie-chan case, Mackie-chan versus St. Louis Hockey Club. So six questions you need to answer. And then there's a legal summary, rule, uh, law review of this case. So you have to read two cases and you try to you answer a um, total of 14 questions. That's the assignment. Okay. Because this is the major part uh, for your midterm exam. Unless understanding the two cases and also the major difference between two cases, then you, ha you will have a hard time, I guarantee. So this is a core part of um, in negligent issues. Okay, so uh, lecture note, uh, page number 29. So violence and criminal law versus civil law. So can you uh, give me some example of any violence uh, caused by athletes or coaches or some other? Oh, really? So do you know what happened after that? Is there any lawsuit? Okay, so that's good. Thank you, Chris. And any, any bra? Uh, I usually shows the YouTube video. So after this class, I want you to Go to YouTube.com and type NBA, NBA 2004 or 2004 NBA Brawl, B-R-A-W-L. Brawl. Brawl is a kind of group fighting. So Rune Artest and Jermaine O'Neal and Wallace. So there's a several players actually were involved in that big fighting. So I want you to think about several different types of fighting. Among the players, player to player violence. That's the kind of normal we see a lot. What about player versus judges or referees or officials? Player versus fan. From the 2004 NBA brawl, the lunar test actually hit a couple of punches in the face of the one of the fan. Okay. And did you um, did you realize that many of the celebrity athlete uh, didn't didn't get as much penalty? as normal, uh, normal per, you know, people. Drunken driver, like a DUI, driving under influence. Okay. In terms of alcoholic beverages, driving after drinking, or driving under drugs. Okay. So you can think about some other uh, different reasons. Ellen Arvison was uh, arrested because of position of uh, illegal possession of guns in his car. Okay. What about the adultery? Kobe Bryant in 2003 in one of the Colorado uh, uh, gar, uh, there's uh, some adultery. Uh, then think about what happened. Nothing special. 
So why is that? If I, if I did the same criminal behavior like those celebrity athletes did, then probably I, will, uh, probably I will be in prison. No exception. I'm one of the normal people. I'm not a superstar athlete. So why, why some of these superstar athletes or celebrity athletes receive benefit, unfair benefit? Okay, so the league and the team actually try to protect the integrity of the league. But what about the prosecutors? Komchar, what are the prosecutors doing? Why they are not willing to file the criminal charges on those athletes? If it happened, then they came back to play. Sometimes you can say, oh, that's not fair. Okay. So page number 29, so number one, prosecutors' reluctance. Prosecutors getting salaries from the tax monies. So they said, oh, sports setting, all the issues, all the issues occurred at the sports setting involving athletes especially celebrity athletes, that's not real crime. So that's the waste of taxes. So they have a real crime such as rape, suicide, gunshot, street fighting, some of the other significant uh, damages to the society, then they can jump up and then take some actions. However, that's a sports setting. Mike Tyson was trying to eat Holyfield ear. Holyfield has a, a bleeding in his ear. That's a serious, right? If, think about it. If you're eating Park jong ear and his ear is bleeding, what, do you, what would he do? He said just nothing happened. Not really. Okay. So prosecutors' reluctance because, oh, we're going to give all the authority to league organizations, league organizers, especially commissioner, NFL commissioner, NBA, and MLB, and NHL. In a similar way, uh, I give you the copy of KBO's regulations. Okay. Uh, Chris, I'm so sorry, this is only written in Korean. Are you, are you to the Korean? Yeah, okay, that's a great learning opportunity for you. The thing is, they try to benchmark some other advanced countries' regulations and um, uh, bylaws. So is there any, okay, there's a leftover. So, um, As you can see, the regulation in terms of fines to the players, coaches, and, and uh, officials, then all the fines, all the uh, penalty will be coming out of these regulations by laws. And then I just want you to look at, especially page number, page number 70, 70, um, 75, 75. So think about the newspaper today, this morning, one of the LG Twins players, Mr. Chung, um, was charges on DUI, driving, drunken driving. 
We don't know uh, what happened exactly, but investigators, like uh, prosecutors, uh, uh, should know exactly what happened. But based on your drunken driving, then what kind of penalty, what kind of penalty um, did he have? LG Twins said LG Twins general manager, or you can call it president or CEO, gave him 1,000 uh, 1,000, okay, about uh, $10,000, 1,000 won, is fine, based on any regulations. Which regulations? I couldn't find it. Probably LG twins have uh, some, their own bylaws between the owner or um, um, the club president or general manager and the players. However, based on KBO regulations and bylaws, I did not see any, any one sentence, one clauses indicating their behaviors. The only one thing I thought that's close to what their behavior will be on the page number 75. If you look at the top of page number 75, three, race discriminations or domestic violence and a sexual assault and others, then they will be they will be suspended from the game, right? They will lose eligibility to play for KBO, right? And some um, some fines will be imposed to to the players. But we didn't see anything in terms of Um Junjun DUI in this list. I read all KBO books, but I didn't I didn't find any, any one word indicating um jun jun or drunken driving or DUI. So I kind of doubt why did, didn't uh, KBO president take any action on Mr. Chang. So based on this regulation, KBO president should, should have taken some actions. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Based on the page number 75, number 3. Uh, if I read in Korean, 사회적으로 무리를 일으킨 경우, DUI can be considered or interpreted as one of the 사회적 무리를 일으킨 경우. So you can, you can assume that, oh, that's why. His case was a newspaper. Once it has been published in newspaper, then that will be a significant impact on young generation who follows LG Twins. Young generation who believe Jung Kyung Ho as a role model. So that is one of the impact of, uh, social impact of his DUI drinking. Uh, just 10,000 10, dollar fines. Directly from the LG Twins. But what I'm suggest, um, um, claiming is he didn't get any suspension or fines from KBO president. According to this regulation, KBO president should have take, taken some actions regarding his DUI accident. Uh, not yet, not that I know of. So if KBO is doing great based on this regulation, okay, then should they should should follow uh, the Peg Worship Ilcho 151 clause. Okay. But this, I mean, this is what what I want you to do because if you write some, if you see some accident, some instant. Uh, 
associated with athlete or sports related, then I want you to look at some regulations. What happened? Okay, you can compare. If you want to be a journalist in the future in sports media, then you need to report with accurate information. Okay? Not just copying from other newspapers. This is not your job to copying, but you need to look at the original sources like regulations and bylaws. And then you can, uh, you can see them follow the regulations and bylaws. What about some other KBRs? One of the uh, 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 Kim Mingu, one of the basketball players, he, he did the same thing, right? So if, if you read newspaper, how many game suspension, number of games suspension from the KBR were uh, this much money of fines from KBR, then you have to look at their regulations and bylaws. Do they follow the direction? Rules are rules. Doesn't matter this is an emergency situation for KBR because a lot of uh, illegal gambling issue with the uh, players and, and, and head coaches. But when you give some penalty, regardless of the state of, uh, of the, uh, uh, the people, right, you have to be fair to everyone based on the regulations. Okay, so I want you to read this. Let's, okay. So prosecutor's reluctance is number one reason. And number two, difficulty singing criminal behavior by athlete. In basketball game, so you will see probably a lot of, uh, you know, upper shoulder, uh, uh, the incident. After the game's over, they are friends. They're colleagues. They know each other. They have a duty of care to protect each other. Right? Professional player. I have to play a sports by rules. And then there's a two major different results from two, two cases. Nabojini case versus Mechanism case, totally opposite decision. Sports cases do not uh, uh, handle at the Supreme Court level. More important issues. A lot of issues more important than sports issues. So when I say seminar cases, which means most of seminar cases were uh, uh, handled at the intermediate level of court. Not many sports cases were handled or solved at the Supreme Court. So Nabojini case and Mackechan case were solved at the intermediate uh, court of appeals. Kodungbabon, that's the probably most the highest level of court uh, with sports cases. And uh, number three, legal difficulty in obtaining a legal verdict. There are further legal difficulties obtaining a guilty verdict in these cases. A defense of consent is often raised uh, to assert that an athlete implicitly consents to bodily contact permitted by sports rules or customs. We, uh, we allow some of the contact, certain level of contact, because we know the players, we know the sports. We've been playing that sport for a long time, especially for a professional athlete. And then, have you watched the Million Dollar Baby? Million Dollar Baby? Have you watched? Million Dollar Baby, the Hillary Swank, uh, one of the, um, the star uh, was in the movie. And then she has been, very, uh, has been very successful in terms of winning the game, winning the tournament all the way through the uh, final games. The opponent was nicknamed as Black Bear, a uh, Blue Bear. And in the middle of the games, the ring, uh, the bear was rang. And then a uh, blue bear, blue bear actually hit behind her, behind her back, on purpose. Time's up, and then he 
hit her behind the back, and she actually fell down. And then one of the trainer of Hitler's strength put a chair on the corner of the ring, and then accidentally she fell down, and one of the head hit one of the corner of the chair, metal chair. So she has become permanently paralyzed. Permanently paralyzed. If it's the case, if you are the family of Hillary Swank, and what would you do? How can you make a case against Blue Bear? Was Blue Bear seriously negligent? Or is this real violent cases? Because she was, she has become permanently paralyzed. She was in the hospital all the way, all you know, entire her life, probably, rest of her life. Then, because of that medical condition, do we have to let Blue Bear to serve in prison? That's the topic. A certain battery. A certain battery. 공갈협박 and 폭행, a certain battery. Assert is 공갈협박 uh, and battery is a 폭행. But assert always comes with battery most of times. A certain battery in sports games, sporting event. How can you handle that situations? Obviously, Blue Bear had the duty of care. I have to play by the rules. Time's up, okay? This round is up couple of minutes of break and then next ring, next round again and again that's a fair game, we call it sportsmanship but not always happening that way a lot of people do not know how to lose a game gracefully so that's the importance, right? We, whenever we educate people, young generation with the sports we try to educate, we try to teach them how to lose a game gracefully. If you know that concept, then you will be a winner. Doesn't matter the actual result of the game. You will be a better person, and again and again. So that's the uh, beauty of the uh, teaching sports in the especially young generation. But that's the, our, our ideal society. In reality, a lot of people okay, try to cheat and try to hurt each other because winning at all cost mentality we gotta win the game one of the most important games especially professional sports champions game if we win we will get a certain amount of money as a bonus I cannot miss one million dollar bonus for example hypothetically okay. so that happens so, but in reality there's no serious penalty why? They trying to transfer on the legal right and authority to legal offices. Commissioner, okay, you have the duty. You're going to find half a million dollar. And they have a fancy name of the penalty. Unsportsmanship like penalty. You have to pay half a million dollar to legal office. Or you will be suspended. How many games? whole season or 10 game, 5 game, depending on the level of a certain battery or some other uh, unethical behaviors or violent uh, action during the game. So I just want to share one of the cases. According to Samson, this is interesting. In a case that illustrates the difficulty of attaining any real deterrence through the criminal law, Todd Bertuzzi of the NHL Vancouver Canucks broke the neck of Steve Moore of Colorado Avalanche in a game of March 8, 2004. Bertucci sucker punched Moore in the head and then drove him to the ice, causing multiple fractures in Moore's neck and concussion. Despite the sen uh, senseless and egregious violence, Bertucci, after being charged with assault, causing bodily harm, this is a similar to million dollar baby case, assault causing bodily harm, accepted a plea bargain 
with a Vancouver prosecutor for one year probation with 80 hours of community service and no criminal record. So this is reality. This is one of the few, one of the, uh, uh, one of the many, um, sorry, one of the many cases. Big fight during the game, no lawsuit, or many of the cases were dismissed. Okay. The tension has been achieved, the core, the top, during the game. We're going to win. But after the games, they drink beer, they go to a restaurant, right? They're having fun together. They are friends. They are colleagues. They understand each other's position. I don't want to fight against our opponent player. Because this is a civil law. I want to serve you prison. We are not enemy. We were kind of rival only at the game. But after game's over, we are friends. We are colleagues. So that's why most of cases were dismissed. I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop this case. I'm on your, I'm on your shoe. And then if it happens again to you, then you, I expect you will drop the case. Because we are 동업자 types of mentality.